Okay, so this is going to be quite a cool one. Today we're going to be adding our add force actor. We'll actually be creating a brand new class for this. If we go straight into the C++ classes folder and we'll come in and create a new C++ class. Now this can be just a standard actor. This is going to be perfectly fine. Just something that we can place in the world. I'll actually call this one YT underscore force actor. I'm going to give this one a new folder. So I'm just going to call this the force demo just so it's not lying around, but it is kind of bespoke to what it's doing. And then make sure this is in the correct public private folders and we can hit create class. Okay, with that finished, we're just gonna go back into our classes over here. My Visual Studios isn't responding, but as soon as that does, uh, the first thing we want to do is I'm gonna steal a little bit of code again from our character header. So we just want some visual representation for this cube. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna get our static mesh component I'm going to copy this and paste this into the top of our header file. We'll just rename this one. So we'll call this one the force cube. And of course, we want to make sure that we add in our U static mesh component called as well. Otherwise, it won't know what that uh, component is. And then the final thing we want to do is I'm just going to place this down here at the bottom of this public section so that we can access this in our uh, force actor class. We just want to give it a variable of float type called force strength. So the strength of the force we want to apply over time. And I'm gonna give this a U property of edit anywhere. Okay, and then we'll just take care of these things back over in the code file. So we'll make sure that we add the correct include, which is simply the include uh, components forward slash static mesh components or component dot H. We'll give this a default force value as well. So force strength, uh, this is actually gonna be a lot bigger than we used to. I think 10,000 might be required rather than the thousand here. Okay, so we've just got all of these out of the way straight away to begin with so that we do not forget to add the variables or the includes so that we uh, we have all of the components that we're going to need ready to interact with. The other thing that we need, of course, is similar to the character class. We can just get that again from the construct here. We want to make sure that the mesh exists. So we're going to create the default sub objects and apply this to the root component. So we can just paste this in up here. Um, and again, we can just rename this to be uh, force mesh. Okay, so that should have everything. If we compile this now, in fact, this should all be visible in our class. We can make a blueprint version of that just to make sure that we can easily edit and update the, uh, the new class. Okay, so that's all compiled and successful. So if we go back over to the engine, I uh, just want to go into the new folder, the force demo, and create a blueprint actor based on this. Put this in the blueprints folder, and we'll call this one BP underscore force actor. So we can already see that this has a mesh component. So if we just go ahead and give this the cube mesh, that will be perfectly fine. And it should also have our force strength, which again is what we need. So we can place this in. We'll put this just over here again so that we can see this as soon as we start play. Um, it's all starting to look a little bit similar now. So if you wanted to add things, in fact, we'll just change the material on this one. Uh, we'll change this to be the gray material. So it's a little bit more obvious against the floor. That should be fine. So now we want to go and add the logic to this. So if we again, go back to our Visual Studio class. Like I mentioned before, this is actually going to be quite simple. The main difference being is that is this will not be added just once on a single event like we've done in the past. This is going to be on our tick event and it will be moving constantly and adding a constant force to our object, which is again what makes it very much like a, a rocket propulsion or something or a rocket thruster. And usually is what this sort of thing is used for. So under the super cool, we're just going to kind of work backwards like we've done previously. So we'll say mesh comp add force just so that we can see the arguments that we're going to get for this. Uh, in fact, this doesn't seem to have compiled everything fully yet, so it's not giving me the autocompletes that I want. Uh, but basically, we only have one argument to pass in here, which is like we've had previously, the actual the force direction, which we're also then going to multiply the strength against. So what we want is the force direction, so we're going to create a new F vector. Uh, what I was hoping is that this would tell us that it would like an f vector to be passed in but it didn't uh, but we're going to create our f vector we'll call this up because that's the direction i want this to go uh, and quite simply this is going to be equal to mesh component get up vector okay so we've got our mesh components up vector so we know which way it's traveling so we're just going to say uh, that we want to add force up multiplied by force strength and then the final thing is that we actually have to pass in the mass of the component. So uh, the mesh comp get mass. And that is it. So if we again compile that, this should add a constant force upwards on our force actor. Um, and we should see it take off as soon as we press play. 
Okay, so we've got a successful build there, which is going to go straight back over to the engine. If we hit play, remember it's that grey cube, which should be flying away. And it may be, yeah, <laughs> forgot to do a few things. So what we want to do is in the mesh, we want to make sure that this is movable, which it is, uh, that it simulates physics, it's got a mass, and it should now work. So that is that is gone. Maybe that is a little bit uh, higher or more powerful than we needed. So maybe not 10,000, maybe it was just 1,000 would be fine. Or did I have that? Yeah, there we go. We can see that's a little bit more reasonable of a speed there. We can actually see things happening. And we have our actor moving upwards. Now there's still a few fun things we can do with this. If we go back to our character class, uh, we still have full control. It's a normal physics actor, so we can turn off our radial force. Uh, we can come in, we can shoot this, and it will still try to fly off in the given up direction. So we might actually want to not affect it quite so much. We can nudge it, and it's going to try and fly around and do its thing. So obviously you can add a lot more logic to this, make it a lot more interesting. Uh, we could also do things like placing ourselves on top of it. Now this is probably going to need a lot more force to actually carry itself and us. So if we put this back to 10,000, then we can see it's actually going to start trying to take off with us on it and then just bounce off. So loads of things we can do with this, all working nice and smooth. So that pretty much wraps up all of the different types of forces or the main types of forces that you'll find in Unreal. Um, gone through some of the quirks in C++ or in general with them, in fact, things like sweep tracing. So I'm going to leave that video here today. As always, if you enjoy these videos or find them useful, please do leave a like and share the video around so that always helps. And of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.